All right. First, um, this tweet, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it, to me, it's more like it's a comic. It's a comic. It's, it's, it's out of order. It's a, it's a confirmation how U.S. is a, a global a bully. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a realization for Zimbabweans and Africa at large to, to see how, I mean, this is a, a imperialistic a tendencies that is, the, the, I mean, these Western countries or superpowers, so-called superpowers, they, they haven't come to a, 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 a reality that he, he, countries like Zimbabwe and Africa at large are now independent re, re, republic, re, republics. Uh, I mean, because the, the Vienna Convention stipulate clearly that he, a country must not interfere with the the, the, the politics of a, a host country, the embassy must not, they must be involved in business, uh, observing the politics of Zimbabwe, reporting back to their host country, which is US, uh, the, 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 I mean, the central government. But they are not supposed, any engagement with the Zimbabwean government um, or politics must be through the office of the foreign minister. This is gross interference and disrespect of our sovereignty and independence as a country. Okay, what could be behind the tweet? Let's go through the tweet and okay. let's unpack it. Firstly, who wrote this tweet? Who in the, uh, in your view, let's say we look at the American embassy in Harare, who could be, is it a, a senior level? Is it a junior? Who is it? Who does this? Yeah, to me, then obviously it must be the ambassador. Uh, although the person who can tweet can be a junior, but uh, this this can't go without the ambassador's knowledge and approval. Secondly, even the main, the central government, the, the United States, uh, it's it, we are under sanctions from the central government, and uh, and we know how hostile they are towards Zimbabwe. They are they are they are they are foreign policy towards Zimbabwe. It's it's, it's 100 hostility. So. And we know how they are funding the, 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 the um, radio station is funding Studio 7, which is always desperately saying we are independent, we are not biased towards anything. It's a radio station that is not biased. They don't always scream we are not biased. So Studio, studio 7 is sponsored by the government, government of the United States. The sanctions are sponsored by the United States for 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 Zimbabweans for a, a, an economic meltdown that would then make the opposition say ZANU-PF is failing. So to me, it, it's their policy. Whoever tweeted is it's not a, 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 a main, main issue. The main issue is that this tweet is aligned with their policy, hostile policy uh, towards Zimbabwe. Okay, let's go through the tweet. When will the Zimbabwe government resume by elections? Long standing parliamentary vacancies have left over 754,000 voters in 26 constituencies without electoral representation. Only by elections will restore these citizens' rights to representation. Is this true? All right. Um, they, or let me say this. Uh, when talk about by-elections, that's the pinnacle of politics. And without looking at this uh, tweet as true or false, this uh, tweet must come from opposition from Zimbabwe. It must come from activists. It must come from uh, ordinary citizens. Because these are stakeholders to the Zimbabwean politics and the governance of their country. Uh, the whole tweet becomes a, a, a wrong thing altogether because it is coming from an, a former, I mean, a colonizer or imperial power. A foreign government must not do this. It's a violation of the Vienna Convention, diplomatic uh, uh, etiquette. Let's not look at the, the content of the tweet. Let's look at is the whole tweet uh, legally or not? Is it in constituting interference or not? This is a gross interference. 
and disrespect of the country, the sovereignty of Zimbabwe. Then if we go to the context, uh, the government of Zimbabwe, I, 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 I want to, 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 to point out something here. They, 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 they tweet quotes the election, uh, which, uh, which took place, it should be August, I think, in, in Zambia. And I guess it's March last year, the elections which took place in, 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 in Malawi. I want to, 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 to clarify here to your viewers that the, this example uh, in reference to the Zimbabwean situation, it, 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 it's totally uh, uh, misplaced. Why? Uh, elections in Zambia and in, 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 in Malawi, and I, also, I think the they, they, they tweet also referenced the South Africa, uh, 1 November local government elections. I, I'll take one by one. In Zambia, it was a general election. A general election is supposed to be done. Otherwise, any citizen can even go to court because the general election uh, interferes with the, the governance of the country. You can't avoid a general election. In Malawi, it was a general election. In South Africa, it's also a, a, a local government, which is a national election. In Zimbabwe, it's not a national election. It's a by-election of 26, only 26 constituencies out of more than 100, 300 uh, parliamentary constituencies. Now, uh, the statutory instrument uh, 22A of uh, March 2000, 2020, last year, it suspended the holding of any electoral uh, I mean, uh, activity due to the pandemic. So the government obviously needs a healthy population to participate in elections. And secondly, Zimbabwe being under sanctions, the, the meager resources were channeled towards the pandemic. COVID-19 is a, is, is a natural disaster that he, no one knew before the disaster that there will be a disaster and then there must be some budget for, for it. And currently, the government is trying to, to, to have a, a, a head immunity, immunity of almost 60% for it to be 100% sure that it, by nature, elections, they attract gatherings in terms of rallies. And those are super spreaders. So I, I, I want just to, to, to clarify that, that the elections in three countries are not the same as in Zimbabwe. A general election in Zimbabwe is coming in 2023. And okay. I, I, Mr. Jonas, I want, to, I want us to, 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 to look deeper at this. I don't want this to be superficial. Okay. So I want us to answer the questions to the satisfaction of everybody. All right. The Americans... Is it a policy position or is it a position of the staff at the embassy that they can tell a, a, a government like Zimbabwe to hold by-elections? Because by-elections are local things, right? Very little. It's like an MP and a councillor at that level. What, okay. what is the driver of this statement? It's a policy position. Because an embassy is a, a department of the central government. The, the embassy of U.S., whatever they tweet or whatever they say, has got a bearing on the relationship between Zimbabwe and the U.S. Uh, we don't need to hear it from Joe Biden or, or, the, or his vice president. What is the purpose of the embassy in Zimbabwe? To represent the main land government in the US. So let, let's not separate the embassy and the, and, and the United States of America a central government. Okay, now let's, let's look at the response to what you just said. Yeah. The US embassy says many countries have held elections despite the pandemic, including Zambia, South Africa, Malawi, the USA, demonstrating that COVID safe elections are possible. We are confident, confident Zimbabwe can do the same. Is this true? All right. I, 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 I will repeat again. 
elections which are, which took place in Malawi and 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 Zambia and the upcoming elections in about uh, uh, let me say a month uh, you know in South Africa uh, one November these are general elections they are different from from a, a by election a, a general election for, let me just give an example for maybe a, a national election a general election in Zambia it was going to choose a member of parliament and the president. So the country can't, can't afford to operate without the leadership. It's different from a, just a mere by-election. And, and as, as I said, Zimbabwe was left without even financial capacity to host an election. We are under sanction. And we don't have huge budgets to, to fight a disaster. Otherwise, our health system was struggling even before the COVID pandemic. Okay, let's go to the response by Zach. Okay. Uh, Zach put out a statement, I think that was on the 24th, on their Facebook page. If you go to their Facebook page, it's there now. Yeah. They say, in terms of Section 38 of the Electoral Act, the state president, in consultation with Zach, proclaims deaths of elections and by-elections. According to Section 1583 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, by elections, which are a right for every citizen, are held within 90 days after vacancies have occurred. However, Section 862B of the Constitution limits such rights in the interest of defense, public safety, public order, public morality, and public health. The conduct of by election was suspended by statutory instrument 119 of 2021 entitled Public Health, COVID-19 Preventing Containment and Treatment, National Lockdown Number 2, Amendment Order 2021, Number 21. From my, my, my own view, they are blaming the president here for not holding the okay. by-election. They are All not right. saying anything about capacity. They are saying the president stopped them from holding the elections. All right. Um... I think it's clear here yeah, they are quoting the, the statutory instrument, although they are saying one one something. Uh, the statutory instrument uh, to do with COVID uh, uh, prevention, containment, and treatment suspended. They, 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 are, they are stating it clearly that, uh, however, uh, the, the, a, section, a second section they, they quoted, that it's all about public health and safety. Uh, so. It's clear now that the, 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 the president will be informed by the Minister of Health. This has got to do with the statutory instrument that suspended the, 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 host, the holding of elections. The president is a, 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 a servant of the constitution. His duty is to uphold the constitution. So now I don't know what is being quoted here is chapters of the constitution. And, and, and statutory instruments, the president would declare the dates of elections when, when you know, no, no, not in violation of the statutory instrument, because the statutory instrument is put uh, because of the public safety, safety and, 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 and this disaster. So I, I think that the, the, the president is mentioned because he is the person who is supposed to declare the elections, but. In, in, in view of the public safety. Okay. But that doesn't answer my question. <clears throat> Let's go back to what Zeki said. Mm -hmm. Zeki is saying they are ready, right? They want to hold the by-elections. Okay. From, from this statement, it's All not right. them who are stopping the by-elections. Yeah. They are saying it's the president. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Zeki is... is, 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 is Zeke is an entity which must be ready every day. Zeke is ready every day. But remember, Zeke is a, is, a, is, a, is a department different from, run differently, independently from the Minister of Health. The government, the central government is divided into different departments. But they all communicate to each other and to the president of the nation. Now, if Zeki is saying we are ready for elections, 
That's that, that's true, and that's okay. That's correct. But there's a Ministry of, of Health which would write according to the situation on the ground. And Zeki doesn't go around the country uh, looking, I mean, researching about the pandemic, the statistics, everything. That's not the duty of Zek. Zek is there to say, we print the ballot boxes, we do this and that. But they don't do that uh, independent of the situation from other government institutions like the Ministry of Health. This statutory instrument was put because COVID is a, is a disaster. It's a disaster. So I, I, I think it's so clear here. Yeah, I, I don't know where you are confusing. Uh, obviously, a letter is coming from the Ministry of Health, and then a special instrument is put in place. Zeki is not involved here. Okay, so you are saying Zek. Okay, I, I want us to clarify that. What is the role? Yeah. Because I, I want to understand the problem. There is a problem here. Okay. And we, let, let's go into the solution. Okay, Zeki is quoting public, public health and safety. Yeah. Zeki is, is quoting statutory instrument. Okay. But they started by mentioning the president. The, the first mm -hmm. sentence that they did there, mm -hmm. they, are, they are blaming the president. No, 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 I'm, no. no, I'm, no. Not, I'm not mistaken here when I say this because oh, okay. that is well, what they say. No, let me say this. The, 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 constitutionally, Zeki, they don't declare election date. This is a procedure. They are not blaming, but procedurally, constitutionally, the president is the person who declare elections date, not Zeki. Secondly, so when they quote the president, it's a procedural issue. When they, they go on to mention the statutory instrument, they go on to mention the public health and safety. Why are they, they even said section 1583 uh, declares the holding of elections within 90 days. And they, they, they went on to mention another chapter within the constitution, which now seeks to clarify that it, there must be consideration of public health and safety. That other chapter suspends the war rights in contained in, in, in section 1583. They, they are saying that in, in, in that maybe response, they are saying that clearly. There's a chapter. Okay. I'm, hearing, I'm hearing the chapters. I'm hearing the chapters. Yes. But what is stopping the president right now from proclaiming? Because I want this to be a serious discussion, right? I don't want us to, right. to go into <laughs> politics. Yeah. Okay. I want the, the issues that are there. What are the issues that are stopping the okay. president from declaring the Thank election, you. proclaiming the elections? Uh, dealing with a tweet from the US embassy and a tweet from Zeki, uh, because I don't have a direct line to the president. Uh, we, we, are, we are going to use these three, two tweets. Zek, American tweet, obviously, we, I discredit it because they don't have any business to do with the Zimbabwean elections. And again, I get bold to tell them to go to hell. But uh, the tweet of Zek, I consider it, because Zek is a, is, is a stakeholder in our politics, in our elections. Zek, what is stopping the president from declaring the elections debt? From Zek's tweet, it's clearly, uh, I forgot the other chapter they, 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 they quoted, which is suspends the whole rights in, contained in 1583. Secondly, there's a statutory instrument, they said 111 something, which is already in place. And this, this is an amendment in response to the disaster. A statutory instrument, it, it's, a, it's a law. Now, the president, when the Minister of Health, was a statutory instrument is put in place from the findings or recommendations done by the Minister of Health. The president is also a worker of the constitution of the country. He doesn't do what he, he thinks is good. 
so the president here, yeah, what stops the president from declaring the, the election date is the law and the situation okay. in the country. What I'm hearing you is the law, but already we are past the 90 days. Okay. And inter, inter, inter provincial travel is allowed. By elections right. are local. They are local to a, to a small ge geographical area. All right. W why not just open up the elections and then All people right. can vote and get over this thing? A, a, a brilliant question. There are so many things opened up, uh, including the inter provincial. The easing out of uh, um, lockdown restrictions it has got nothing to do with the holding of by elections why people you can't have maybe a thousand people traveling in a car those people they travel with using a car a train or or a bus but naturally an election attracts a rally if me and you mr gambako we can agree if you checked what happened in zambia we had instances where there was crowds. Again, I will refer you to the election which was hold, held in, in Uganda. I, I was following it. At some point, we could have 10,000 crowds of 10,000 or more. And at some point, even the opposition leader was arrested for violating the, 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 the COVID-19 rules. But it became a political matter and more than 50 people were killed protesting that he must be he must be uh, released and the government some looking at the i mean they, they they don't enjoy killing people at the end of the day he, he went on holding rallies which were which were bumper crowds in violation i think they were the the law was allowing maybe 200 i can't remember or less but he, he was got he was having more than five thousand people, ten thousand people. And at the same time, when people are arrested, it will be a violation of human rights, it will be a persecution. I mean, be in the in the shoes of the government. Uh, what would happen when people are arrested from the opposition because they violated uh, the provisions of COVID-19? It will be persecution. And the election will be not free and fair. Okay, Mr. Jonas, I, I think let's go to one of the comments we heard here. Yeah, from Eddie, and I, I want to I want us to go back. Yeah, you you made a key point that the Americans were not supposed to say anything about local elections. I, I think that point is taken. The Zimbabwean embassy in, in in Washington or in the states they would never go and say. Uh, please don't do your elections in a certain way or on a certain yeah. day. So you, yeah. you made a key point. Let's go to the opposition. AD here says our opposition is too weak or is supposed to be the first to press on the issue. Have you ever heard uh, Fadzai Mahere or Chamisa talking about this by election, saying they must be held? Except for Opo. I've seen Opo uh, talking about it. Have you ever okay. heard Mahere, the spokesperson of the MDC, saying these uh, elections are key? They are not interested in much of that. Uh, why? Because uh, either one, they respect the law and they understand the disaster. Zimbabwe as a country under sanctions, uh, if we are honest, our economy is struggling. If we are honest. And in the, in the face of a disaster, of a pandemic, uh, a lot of people from the opposition we're predicting millions to die because uh, of our poor state of our health care, which is true. Our health care is in a, is in a poor state, but we are talking about almost 4,600 deaths now out of almost 122,000 cases. The government is performing so well, more than a regional economic powerhouses like South Africa. And no one, even the opposition is saying the government is a handling of COVID-19 pandemic is, is a disastrous. The government is not buying uh, vaccines. They are being donated. I mean, I mean, 
everything, every stone is being thrown at the government. I, I pray for a day that I wake up and the citizens of Zimbabwe understand that the government is the citizens. And the Zimbabwe as a country, it must be protected by us as the citizens. But people choose in opposition to blame everything about the president, to blame everything about the government institutions. What is okay. American? So no, no, I'm, hearing, American, I'm hearing you, Mr. Jonasi, but let's yes. go back to the question. Our opposition parties, the, are they capacitated, me, 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 are they capacitated me, to, to respond to these issues? Maybe let me ask you, Mr. Gambakwe, do we have an opposition party? Of course we do, Mr. Jonas. We have 24 parties in Poland. They, Not one. They, uh, wait, 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 wait today. Wait, wait today. Wait today, Mr. Gambakwe. Mr. Gambakwe, Zimbabwe, we, we, we start contracting Zimbabwe the day we are honest. The moment you mention 24 political parties in Poland, it means they, 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 they are clowns. How do we have 24 political parties? Are you aware that we have got more than 100 political parties in Zimbabwe? Opposition. Ha more than 100 opposition political parties to, to, to remove ZANU-PF. And MDC team for Mr. Monzora is having its own alliances somewhere. MDC... Uh, uh, I can't say alliance, they lost the name. Uh, CCC, they have lost the name. Uh, okay, let me say MDC, Mayere, Wende, and, and, and Chamisa. Uh, they are also having other alliances somewhere. We have got Zapu, they are trying to have their own alliances somewhere. Uh, Mr. Gambagwe, the way opposition is fragmenting and the way they have got disunity. It's an advantage for ZANU PF. ZANU PF becomes serious, becomes professional without doing anything. But firstly, with the clowns, ZANU PF is not only a strong party in Zimbabwe, its strength is in the confused, clueless opposition. So we don't have opposition to remove ZANU PF. We don't have opposition. If there is, is there any opposition in Zimbabwe, maybe they are saving self-interest. Okay. I, I think, I, I wish I, I could talk to our opposition spokespersons because I, I think it's out of frustration that the United States Embassy had to do this tweet. Because our own opposition, honestly speaking, they have not raised this issue. So it's coming from their own side. It's not coming from pressure from the, the opposition parties. Okay, let me tell you that this opposition is, is, is clowns. And the Minister uh, Honorable uh, Kitsko Vendry, if she's listening to me, must we need more theatres in Zimbabwe, more than stadiums. We need more theatres so that we drive this opposition to perform. Uh, Chamisa, in his discussion with the Blessed Mklana, said quite recently 2023 elections is going to be disputed uh, roughly roughly i mean a rough estimation of paying for polling agencies per polling station chamisa's party or any other opposition party in zimbabwe would require 55 million us dollar to pay polling agents Nelson Chamisa's so-called MDC alliance is still owing polling agents of 2018. The same party that, 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 that is owing agents of 2018 is clearly not in a, cap, in, in a position to pay agents in 2023. But the same leader is not worried about him, about the agents who, who were not paid in 2018. The same leader is not worried about uh, councillors and MPs who were recalled, who are suffering right now. We all remember Chamisa when there was a, 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 a prison warder in Chirezi who was fired for violating his job description in, in, in support of Chamisa. Chamisa declared openly that he will be one of my bodyguards. As we speak, the poor 
prison warder is languishing in poverty in Chiret. Now, so how do you expect our opposition to rise to leadership spaces when they don't care? Chamisa has got people who, is, who, who, who signed the affidavit and they were recalled and they are suffering. Have you ever seen Chamisa and this party donating to one MP. These guys are, they used their own resources to campaign. Now they are unemployed. The, the, the central party won't even donate. Chamisa wants to be a president of Zimbabwe, full stop. Every opposition leader wants to be a president of Zimbabwe. That's the problem. Livelihood. Okay. Nothing. I, I hear you. And, and I think, Mr. Jonasi, the point is made. These by-elections and this comment coming from the American embassy, but the local opposition sitting back, relaxed, not going to court, not interested. <laughs> and I, I don't blame the American embassy if they, they, they see that there is a gap here uh, in this uh, political space. Okay. Now, let, let, I want let, to let end with... Uh, ah, yeah. No, let me end before you end. Uh, American embassy on the left, on the right, I want to add, uh, I forgot his name, the, the head of the uh, European uh, Union or Commission in Zimbabwe. I forgot his name. Few months ago, he commented that we have got a weak and clueless opposition in Zimbabwe. And I want you to know that the Americans and the, the, the Europeans, they are in the same basket. That statement confirms frustration. Uh, the regime change agenda is flopping. Now, for them to, to, to speak on behalf of the opposition is desperation. Otherwise, they, they, they are funding, they are advising is not working. Because opposition is not formed on a cause. It's formed on a on an agenda for power. Chamisa doesn't care about the councillors in 2018, how many he got. He doesn't care about member of parliament he got. He doesn't care about senators. He's on, he only went to court for the presidential election. Why? He wants to be a president. Personal ambition, power, it's not a cause. ZANU-PF was formed on a cause. The pain of black people inflicted by white people. So when a party, why a party is formed plays a crucial role. Now I will give an example of HH in Zambia. HH has been a leader of opposition for over 25 years. The question is, is, is this political party not having a limit to presidential, uh, I mean, length. Obviously, there must be a limit, but he was violating year after year until he is a president. That is called democracy. When a ruling party is in power for longer, it's called dictatorship. So I just want people to see uh, that HH is not a saint. How do you lead an opposition for over 25 years? Okay. And I, I think no, 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 there, there, there are a lot of issues we're covering here. So yeah. let, let's now focus this to, to the end. And then yeah. we'll jump to your topic, which you started. Mm -hmm. The Zimbabwe government did not respond yeah. to, to the American embassy. But I think Tafaz Gomgwadi, I, I showed a, a tweet here where yeah. he said uh, a lot of words to the Americans and said, things about the Taliban. Yeah. Do you think that is appropriate? How, how do you deal with the American embassy and make them understand the situation on the ground as the government of Zimbabwe? Do, is it necessary to push them back or to try to explain to them? What is the best a, approach? A, a good question. Um, if, if two fighters leave the ring, and fight in the crowd. What it means is that it, there are no points the referee would, would score or register. When you are fighting in the crowd, it's not official. The American embassy 
is off um, uh, offline. Tafadwa is not Comrade Tafadwa is not a government spokesperson. Uh, I don't know uh, whether his comment was uh, on behalf of ZANU-PF or it was on, uh, on his personal uh, expression. But nonetheless, whether he was representing ZANU-PF or himself is the same. Uh, he, 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 both comments are unofficial. They are unofficial. Then I, 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 I will touch on the government of Zimbabwe. The government of Zimbabwe didn't respond because <clears throat> American embassy didn't communicate to the government of Zimbabwe officially. When American embassy speaks to the government of Zimbabwe, they do it in a form of an email to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and they will get an official response. Or whether they make a phone call or they make an appointment for a meeting, the government doesn't. A social media is more like is more like an official communication. It's more like someone speaking at a bureau. It, it, it's not an official communication. So why would the government respond? There are so many citizens who comment about the government on Facebook or Twitter. The, surely the, the Minister of Information would need to employ more than 5 million workers to respond to every tweet. Okay, so you are saying this is just an opinion. It's not a diplomatic issue at all. No, 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 no. It's a, it's a diplomatic because it's, it, it, it's expressed by a, 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 by a, a diplomatic mission. But the way of communicating is unofficial. Okay. You, you know what I think, Mr. Jonasi? I think the problem at the embassy is probably because of Zimbabweans who work at the embassy. Not, not the people that came from America and okay. set up the embassy there. All right. let, let, let me dismiss that. Yeah. Uh, the, the American Twitter uh, or handle, whoever is assigned to that officially represents the embassy and the central government of US. <laughs> whoever is mandated by whoever, by the ambassador whatsoever, let's not hide behind a finger here. The, 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 the tweet came from the official embassy Twitter handle. Then we can't, any Zimbabwean worker or Malawian worker under the embassy who is given the handle become the official uh, uh, it, it, it becomes the, it represents the, 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 the diplomatic mission you know why I'm raising this issue yeah I think there is an issue at the American embassy in, in Zimbabwe it's the only okay. embassy which, which behaves or which acts in the way that embassy does if you if you were here in South Africa, it's as if there's no American embassy here. They don't right, talk okay. about things that happen here. They don't. They, the only time I've been to the American embassy here, they are doing community work in the community. They are educating about the country and so forth. Okay. But the Mr. American Obama. embassy in Zimbabwe, it's different. It it's it's got an activist role. Okay. It it it's, uh, it's it's in politics. They are on top of everything that is happening. All right, Mr. Yeah. Gambagwe, uh, first, the U.S. we are talking about is the U.S. that he went to Afghanistan and were, were embarrassed, that he went to Vietnam, were embarrassed, that he went to, to, to Iraq and, uh, and declared weapons of mass destruction and, uh, and rem did remove uh, regime change Weapons of mass destruction were not found. We can mention a crisis in Venezuela, especially countries with oil. We can, I can mention Cuba, I can mention everywhere where they've interfered with the domestic policy. What is the American policy on Zimbabwe? Hostile. Secondly, regime change. What is the American policy on South Africa? They are in good bed, 
their friends. Over 250 South Africans were killed just maybe a month ago or two months ago in Free Zuma. Are the Americans saying anything? Nothing. Any sanctions? Nothing. What is CNN saying? What is NBC saying? Nothing. What is BBC saying? Nothing. These people, they speak according to their foreign policy on a certain country. The bullying tactic in Zimbabwe might even be a tactic to provoke our government to, 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 to say something or to do something, maybe and get an excuse, maybe for military intervention. Americans are bullied. That much we know. The, right now, the, the government is, 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 long, is commissioning a project after a project under sanctions. What is the President Mnangagwa doing? By, by, by engaging in economic activities which are successful, he is shaming white supremacy, he is shaming Zidera. And that obviously would frustrate the Americans more. Okay, so, Mr. Jonas, I want to quickly go to this comment. Let, let's go to this comment. Yeah. There is democracy in South Africa, no abductions and no torture and no judicial capture. Is the, re the reason why the Zimbabwean U.S. Embassy in Harare activist because the government in Zimbabwe is not doing the right things? Is that the reason? All right, I, I, I would answer that quickly. Uh, was it, I don't want to speak on behalf of the government. I want to speak on, on terms of, in terms of facts that are, are on the ground, I know. Uh, in South Africa, there's democracy. Uh, I've said August the 1 in Zimbabwe, six or seven people were killed. 60 people. In South Africa, over 40 people were killed. No noise. Uh, I'm talking again of almost the two, over 250 people who, who died. That doesn't make headlines. If the SABC was ordered in order to report the crisis, and that is not taken as the media censorship, uh, over 500 billion of COVID-19 bailout was looted in South Africa. That doesn't have any bearing. There is no corruption which is reported all over the world. N nothing. Everything is normal. The former president of South Africa who was incarcerated recently, pay, I mean, painfully, he, he projected why he was being persecuted. Why the, the, the constitutional court was weaponized against him. No one is interested in that. Democracy is defined by a foreign policy towards a certain the subject. There is no democracy in Zimbabwe according to the US. Why? They even mention about elections are being rigged in Zimbabwe. That's Americans for you. They are telling you that Zimbabwe elections are not free and fair. We have got Donald Trump, their, their, their former president, who is saying I was rigged. Who is sanctioning Americans? Nothing. The same Americans are crying that in Russia interfered with their, their elections. When Zimbabwe, in Zimbabwe, they interfere. It's normal. So now, if we look at all these dynamics, Saudi Arabia, can this person who is commenting can this person advise me if in Saudi Arabia there's democracy? Where there's Sharia, uh, Sharia law? Where Kahashohe, whatever, journalist, was dissolved in acid, whatever? And that was the embarrassment to the world. And America is quiet. Why? Because they are getting oil from Saudi Arabia. Now, now, what is democracy? Democracy in Zimbabwe is in full, in excess. Why? Because democracy in Zimbabwe must be defined by Zimbabweans. 
we let's not define the, our democracy according to Americans. Americans are white supremacists. Americans are, are, are racist. What are they doing to the world? Can we okay, say but, America? But let, let's go back to my point. Yeah. These tweets, yeah. this activism yeah. of the embassy, yeah. it's, is it not coming from the locals who work in the embassy? And the <laughs> people who are around them, like, like Hopewell, like um, people right. who are around who keep massaging the guys and telling them lies about what is happening. Because I do okay. not think the American guys who came here, they don't know how an embassy works. They know they that an embassy it. cannot do these kind of things. Is it not they someone can... just thinking, let me use the American handle to tweet what I like? Thank you, Mr. Gabagwe. Thank you for, for indigenizing uh, our uh, indigenizing American embassy to be more free and, and, and Bukanya people. I, I, I mean, that desire is commendable because you are, you, you are localizing the American embassy. Um, but nonetheless, um, when we comment on the, uh, when we analyze the, the behavior of the American embassy, let's be objective. Uh, we don't, it, it's more like even maybe if America was our neighbor, maybe bombs being fired from their, their country into our country. And then we, we assume it's our Zimbabweans who are in, maybe in America who are firing, launch, launching those rockets. Uh, we, we, we need the facts. Fact is, the tweet was not uh, coming from a fake uh, or a tweet, a, a, a Twitter handle. It's an official handle. And this is always happening. Who do we blame? The American embassy. Let's not try to be, pro I mean, we, we are a country of fake prophets. I know that. And, and uh, fake prophets in Zimbabwe, they are a pandemic also more than, more than the, 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 the COVID-19. So I think I understand that we are, we are coming from a fake prophets pandemic, but this is an official Twitter handle. And we should squarely lay the blame on the ambassador of US and his embassy and his handlers in Washington. And full stop. When we do that, we are objective. And even if they want to take me to court, they can do that because they are they are they are they are bullying us. And time would come that even citizens without the instruction of the government can stand up to the American embassy bullying and shut the embassy out. Okay, Mr. Jurassic, I really enjoy talking about this topic, and I want to say to you, my, myself, I, I've got great disappointment with the American embassy in Zimbabwe, pe on a personal level, uh, every time I deal with them, I find that there is almost a, a firewall <laughs> between an ordinary person approaching the embassy and an activist approaching the embassy. So I, 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 in my heart, I almost felt as if, and I wanted to blame the administrative guys who are Zimbabwean. That, that is what I thought, because every time I deal with them, I do not get any joy uh, from the, the American embassy in Zimbabwe. The American embassy here, the, the senior staff, I, I've, I've st stood next to them and I didn't even know that they were, they were embassy, senior embassy officials who are local South Africans. And to, to tell you a, a story or two, when I started Gambakwe Media, there was a competition at, uh, which was being run, not a competition or a, a fund which they were giving out, I think like $5,000 for media, media. And I was one of the applicants, I was quite confident that we, with the profile that our, our media house had, we we're going to get a, a response. And I did not get any response to our elaborately put out. We, we prepared a presentation, which was quite elaborate. And that was back in 20, I think if I'm not mistaken, 2010, which is almost 10 years ago. And when I saw that happening, I knew that there was corruption happening at the level of the Zimbabweans who work in the embassy. So I had that attitude with the American embassy in Zimbabwe. Since 2010, I had that attitude. Then last year, right. mm -hmm. they had a, 
you know, like when they had the election now, they had people, journalists were supposed to go and cover the elections from Africa. We did the same. We put out an elaborate uh, presentation. They put out a, say, a, a call. Say, come, come, let's go to the United States and cover the elections. And similarly, we, we didn't get a response. And I also attributed that to Zimbabweans who work in the embassy, that they are putting this firewall between the embassy, the actual people in the embassy, the, the people who are Americans, and the Zimbabweans, we've got the, the Zimbabwean mentality, culture, and behavior. Especially this tweet. I don't think that this was an authorized tweet. Right. There's no way. I, I, I right. refuse to accept uh, that. Okay, Mr. Uh, Embassy. Step down to uh, make this tweet. I, 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 I'm praying that he, I take you out of prophecy, prophetic healing <laughs> and stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, this prophet, what, what, this, the, the other one who prophesied by my, my, my dead, the, 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 this mor moronic prophet. Um, and, and, and by the way, I want to mention this one he called Prophet Israel. If I can meet that, that prophet, I will, I will try to murder that, 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 that idiot. Um, but uh, what, what I want to say is, um, Mr. Gambagwe, let's deal with official interpretation of, of, of things. That tweet is coming from, is approved by the American ambassador, is approved by the government. Otherwise, if the, gov the government has got a system to monitor its, or its, its embassies, the, the, the foreign minister or the foreign secretary has got, has got offices and, and representatives, even in Africa, Southern Africa. America is represented, well represented, not only in Zimbabwe, but Southern Africa and Central Africa. Africa is a region and headquarters in Washington. For them to ignore that tweet, they, just one call, the tweet can be taken down. It's 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 a it's a foreign policy. Now, let's not blame the poor Zimbabweans in, in, working in the embassy. They they are, they are there to feed their families. America, there's no local worker. A Zimbabwean will never shift or edit or adapt or whatever or shove policy on American embassy or government. No, Zimbabweans, no matter how senior they are they will never be in a strategic position within the embassy. The embassy is a government of, of US on its own in Zimbabwe. They will never put a Zimbabwe in a strategic policy, influencing policy, whatever, or implementing position. They will never. Okay. If, if there's a Zimbabwe, if there's a Zimbabwe in a crucial position, that is Zimbabwe is a central intelligence agency, agent, CIA. Okay. I, I think let's bring this matter to an end. Obviously, it's a developing issue, a, a developing story. I expect.